The Supreme Court heard oral arguments Monday challenging race-conscious admissions policies at the University of North Carolina and Harvard University. Justice Elena Kagan grilled an anti-affirmative action lawyer on diversity at Harvard. Anti-affirmative action lawyers argued the school's policies discriminate against Asian applicants. The colleges argued that affirmative action is necessary to foster diversity on their campuses. The conservative justices signaled their willingness to end affirmative action in the college admissions process. I mean, are, are you saying now that there is an interest and a compelling interest in racial diversity among other kinds of diversity? I mean, putting Harvard's, you know, whether Harvard should be more socioeconomically diverse, uh, probably should be. Um, uh, but putting that, I mean, is there an interest in racial diversity? Uh, I agree with my colleague, not a compelling interest that could justify a racial classification. But racial diversity is not a bad thing. It is a great thing. Um, it well, is something but, but the whole premise of this, right, and, you know, we can talk about whether uh, these programs are narrowly tailored, whether the universities have done enough to, uh, in, in the, with the use of race-neutral criteria. But the premise of your argument is that even if race-neutral criteria could not achieve the object, Harvard can't use race-conscious criteria. And that must be because you think it's just not important enough. Isn't that right? I don't think that's right. So we have very detailed record evidence here that if Harvard just turned off race on its admissions process, it would still have 6% African Americans, I believe it's 9% Hispanics, so 15% underrepresented. So you think like good enough but how about if it were 2%? I mean, the nature of your argument is that it doesn't matter. That's what the nature of your argument is. I, I disagree, Justice Kagan. It does matter because if you're below those numbers, then Harvard's probably discriminating in some sense, and it should stop. Or it's not reaching underrepresented minorities in the way that it should. Perhaps it should not. But well, that's just fighting the, the, the question. I mean, the question is, um, you know, is there a limit beyond which you would say, oh, yes, if, if you can't achieve that level of diversity with race-neutral criteria, then you're allowed to use race-conscious criteria. I, I don't think there's any level that justifies explicit racial classifications, but I, I'm going to fight the hypothetical one more time if you'll let me, because yeah, race-neutral no, alternatives... No, I don't think I will. So let me just go on and ask you a couple of other things. I mean, I mean because this is, a, you know, to me, this is a lot of the argument here is about... A university has a, a, a compelling interest in collecting a diverse class, including along racial dimensions, and maybe especially along racial, racial dimensions, given the kinds of challenges that our society faces, in the exact same way that all the other institutions of our society does. So I'm just going to ask you some questions about that. If, 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 uh, if you're a hospital and you serve a diverse group of patients, is it super important to you to have a diverse set of doctors? Um, I, I don't know that the, that the evidence about the diversity of doctors and patients or anything about the medical field. It wouldn't sense. matter, yeah. Okay, or maybe it would, you don't know. If you're a police department and you serve a diverse community, is it super important to you to have a diverse set of police officers? I mean, I, I believe that's important if there's good evidence that, that, that a racial classification was needed. That has nothing to do with the educational benefits of diversity in universities. That's the interest that Grutter Do you upheld. think that uh, if you're a law firm or if you're a judge, if you're a judge and you want to have a diverse set of clerks, do you think a judge can't think about that in making clerkship decisions? Absolutely can think about it. Uh, this court's decision in Feeney says knowledge of race is not the violation. It is using it as a factor I'm to using, distinguish let's, let's say a judge says, I want a diverse set of clerks. That's, you know, I want clerks who would, you know, grade on every, any number of criteria, but I also want a diverse set of clerks. So over the years, people will look at that and they'll say, there are Asian Americans there, there are Hispanics there, there are African Americans there, as well as there are whites there. Can a judge not do that? I mean, I think that's a, that's a, that is an admirable goal. I don't think a judge could implement that goal by putting a thumb on the scale against Asian applicants or giving a big preference to black and Hispanic applicants. I think you need to treat people treat, uh, equally based on race, just as you're not going to hold my race against me in judging the quality of my arguments. I think race, uh, racial diversity is important because it's a good metric to make sure our, our, our institutions are equally open. You can certainly be concerned about that. But the question is using racial classification, telling people that you didn't get the clerkship because of your race. Yeah, but the, the, the point here is, look, everybody would rather 
achieve all our racial diversity goals through race neutral means. Everybody would rather that. And that's certainly what our cases say you have to do. The question is, when the race neutral means don't get you there, are you prevented from taking race into account in all those ways that I said, and I could add a dozen more, businesses who find it necessary, you know, in order to achieve their economic objectives to have racially diverse workforces. I mean, I could go on and on and on. And the question is, when race neutral means can't get you there, don't get you there, when you've tried and tried and they still won't get you there, can you go race conscious? I don't believe so, Justice Kagan. And I think your, this court has already said in parents involved that racial diversity is not a compelling interest. It is the overall diversity of all kinds on college campuses. And I don't, I mean, this is not, this doesn't have to be hypothetical. We presented an alternative to Harvard that would achieve socioeconomic diversity for the first time, that would boost uh, underrepresented minority representation, that would lower the number of white students on campus. And so we're talking not about no diversity and diversity. We're talking about 10% black representation or 14% black that's representation. 